I gave you a general overview of the Nikon D800 menus and the info screen in a highlights video. Now it's time to get into the specifics of each menu. In this video, I'll show you the playback menu. You may not have a D800, but this video may still be helpful to you, as Nikon tends to keep their menu options similar among their cameras. After you press the menu button, the playback menu is the top menu on the left hand side of the screen. This menu is where you manage the images on your camera. The first item on the list is delete, but it only shows up if you have images on the card. Otherwise, it's grayed out. It deletes images. If you select it, you go to a second screen where you can select certain photos for deletion, like so. Or if you select all, you can choose to delete all of the photos on either card. Of course, you can also delete images in playback with the trash can button, like so. The next item is the playback folder. There are three options here to choose which images show up when you hit the playback button on your camera. You can either have all the images created with the D800 visible during playback, images in all of the folders on the memory cards visible, or only pictures in the current folder visible. I leave this on the default, which is photos taken with the D800 will be visible. Hide image allows you to hide specific images during playback. This will hide images during playback. They won't show up when you scroll through the images you've taken. This can be helpful if you are wanting images to not be displayed if you're doing a slideshow, which is an option that I will show you in just a minute. You've got set select and deselect. Click the center of the multi-selector here to hide the image and then hit OK to confirm your selections. If you want to unhide the images, you go to deselect all and confirm. Next is playback display options. Here you decide how images are displayed on the screen during playback. Backing up for a second, let's talk about playback mode. You can view your image on several screens during playback by pressing up and down on the multi-selector. On some Nikons, you actually press left and right to do this. You can see your image alone. You can see varying amounts of information, like the time and date the image was taken, or shooting data. You can see highlights, even GPS information. But you customize how many of these things you can see, and even how many of these different information screens you can scroll through on each image. And this is where you do that. So, back to our options. We can have a screen where we show the focus point. To choose this, you press the right arrow on the multi-selector. You can see that a check mark appears when I've selected something. Next, do I want to have a screen where only the image is showing with no additional data? Do I want to have a screen that shows the highlights? If this is chosen, the highlights will show by blinking on the screen. I find this screen especially helpful for a quick check of where my highlights are in a photo, so I check this. Do I want a screen that shows the image's histogram? Do I want a screen that shows the image's shooting data, like the metering mode, the aperture, and the focal length? And do I want an overview screen, which shows a thumbnail of your image, plus some of the file information and shooting data? When we're done making our choices, we go back up to Done and press the OK button. Now, why wouldn't we want to show all the information? Well, it takes time to go through the screens, and maybe you don't want to have to do that every time. That, you know, time is precious when you're taking photographs. If you're photographing an event, you might want to be able to quickly check through your highlights or your histogram, but not particularly care about seeing anything else like your focus point, and not want to take the extra time to scroll through the extra information between shots. So, this is something that you might want to recustomize depending on the situation. Copy images is the next option. Here, you can copy images from one card to the other in your camera. First, you need to select Source. You select either your SD card or your compact flash card. Next, you select images. You choose the folder, then the images. You can select all or just select your protected images. If you select all, you can actually go in and deselect certain images using the center button on the multi-selector. You press OK to confirm. Next, you select your destination folder. You are able to select the folder from a list if you have more than one folder on the card, or you'll be able to select the folder by number. When we get here, you can see in the corner that we are doing this on the compact flash card, and we're creating a new folder on it. Press OK when you've chosen the number. 
Then you actually copy the images by highlighting copy images and pressing OK. Then you confirm and it tells you when it's done. Press OK and you're taken back to the last screen. The next option is a yes or no question. Do you want image review on or off? Image review is where the image shows up on your screen after you take the photo. Now, what do you want to happen after you delete an image? If you are in playback and you use the trash can button to delete an image, you can have the camera show the next image, show the previous image, or continue as before. If you choose continue as before, the camera will look at the last thing you did. If you were scrolling forward through the photos, it will go to the next photo. If you were scrolling backwards through the photos, it will go to the last photo. Rotate tall is an on or off answer. Do you want the images showing on the screen to be rotated to be right side up if it was taken in the portrait orientation? Next is slideshow. This is where you can put on a slideshow on the LCD screen of your camera or when you're plugging it into a larger screen using a cable. Your first option is to simply start the show. You can also choose the image type that will be included. Do you want still images and movies, just still images, or just movies? Last, you can choose the frame interval, meaning how long each image is displayed. Last is DPOF print order. DPOF stands for Digital Print Order Format. This option allows you to choose images to print if you connect your camera to a printer or plug the memory card into a printer. Keep in mind, though, that only printers that are compatible with the picked bridge standard will be able to do this. You can check your photo printer's documentation to see if it is picked bridge compatible. Here, use select or deselect which photos you want to print. Choosing select, you see at the bottom that you use the key button and the multi-selector to select or deselect photos. You press the key button and the up arrow at the same time to select a photo or to add to the number of prints and the key button and the down arrow to decrease the number of prints or deselect a photo. Once you've made your choices, you press OK. You can choose to print shooting data on the photo and or print the date on the photo. You choose these by highlighting your choice and pressing the right arrow. Or you can choose to print just the images and highlight done and press OK. Then your print order is complete and ready for printing. That does it for the playback menu. Now, I don't spend a lot of time in the playback menu and you probably won't either. <laughs> Most of the options are kind of set it and forget it. However, there are some items that you might need to access at least from time to time, like image review or print order, or maybe even the playback options. Now we still have five more menus to take a look at. I'll be explaining each one in its own video in detail. Then I'll even do the info screen. In the meantime, let me know if you have any questions.